Hello everybody, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Today we're talking about the myth of adulthood. So we start off in this world as little children and everything looks huge to us. The whole world we look at with fresh eyes, full of wonder, full of curiosity. And once we are able to talk, we start asking questions continuously and we just want to understand and explore and, you know, discover all there is to discover in this place. And then something happens along the way through going to school from primary to high school and then eventually TAFE or university or college as some might call it. And you know we start working and all these new responsibilities get heaved on us and all these expectations from our parents, from our peers, from our society, you know. And you know something happens along the way through all of that something starts to change about that child that we were with eyes full of curiosity, fresh perspective, just being in awe at the wonder of everything. And we start finding routine and predictability and stability and comfort and stability and predictability. And we stop being as spontaneous and as open to the magic of the world, to the chaos of the moment. And we start striving for more order and structure. Now this is also tied to how I notice people when they're talking to children they often talk down to them. You know like a parent would talk down to a child as if you know the child's point of view isn't really as valid as the parents because they're just a kid. You know kids don't talk back. Don't talk back child. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm the adult here. And I think it's this, this, this myth of adulthood that really causes a lot of problems when it comes to child-parent connections and respect and understanding. See, when I, when I talk down, I don't talk down to children, but when I physically talk down to children, usually I'll go down on my knee and I'll be at their level because that's just respectful, it's good etiquette. When I'm talking to a child, I don't think, oh, this is just a kid and I'm an adult and we're on two different you know, levels altogether. But I think, okay, this is a little kid, and I'm a big kid, and we're both kids, just uh, different ages, you know. So at the moment, I'm a 26-year-old kid, you know. Sure, I might, uh, based on the criteria of the culture and society I live in, I might meet certain standards of what constitutes an adult, or the idea of an adult, and I may have to do adult things, you know and with all these adult responsibilities. But that doesn't mean I am a adult. An adult is not a thing. A child is a thing. We're born into this world as children, as creatures basically, as critters that grow and get bigger. It doesn't mean that we change. It doesn't mean that we become a different entity. I mean, what, when you turn 18 or 21 or what, when you lose your virginity or when you have your first beer in a pub, at which point do you suddenly become an adult and a child? You know, stop being a child. And everyone, everyone understands this. Everyone talks about an inner child, you know, and everyone says you've got to keep the, the inner child alive. And I believe that, but I don't, you know, even that is still kind of, still kind of saying that, you know, we started off as children fully and absolutely. And then over time, some other kind of entity started to develop and that entity ended up embodying this child inside, you know, the inner child. Like it's something locked away in this cage of what is develop an, a developing adult. When I don't see it as being a separate part, as something inside you which you have to nurture, I, I see you as still being absolutely, in your entirety, that child. And I think the biggest issue is that people forget about their child. They forget how to relate to themselves for what they are because they spend too long fixating on the expectations and the ideas of what it means to be an adult and a respectable adult in today's world. They become, spend so long spending their, their time fixating and thinking and focusing and striving to become the, and to satisfy the criteria for this idea of adult that they disconnect from child, they disconnect from who they really are as a creature experiencing life in all its wonder and all its possibility with open eyes and inquiring eyes, asking a million questions and wanting to understand everything. 
with passion. Why? Maybe not necessarily because it's going to help with your career or it's going to lead you uh, progressively in any direction that will reward you with money or other such gains that you can measure in any way. But they do it just for the sake of it, just to satisfy their curiosity, just to experience it. Even if there's no physical gain that you can hold afterwards, the experience leaves something inside that matters more. And the children realize this. They realize about living in the moment and playing and the importance, crucial importance of playing and how it connects us emotionally with each other. Something that adults or people that have become too fixated on the idea of adult could probably learn a bit about if they sat down with a child and instead of just looking down on them, instead of just looking down on them and thinking, oh, this is just a little kid nonsense and doing baby talk, if, it, if an adult actually sat down with a child and spoke to it the same way they'd speak to an adult, you know, respectfully, listening attentively to what is being said and trying to understand their perspective and the value of their perspective and the merit, they would learn a lot more, you know, instead of just being closed off to it because they think that they're separate. At the end of the day, I think once we disconnect from our inner child, and once we start seeing ourselves as separate from children, because we're adults now, I think we lose something magical. I think we lose something very important for our spiritual and emotional progress, not just individually, but collectively, and in, in the terms of you know, our ability to connect intimately with other people and to play with people. I think play is very important. I think people in the Western world, capitalized you know, societies, they, they place way too much weight and importance on work. You know, always having to work and be productive. And if you're spending too much time doing something which isn't building towards, you know, something which will be financially rewarding, then you're wasting time playing around like a child. When people say that, I don't take it as an insult. I take it as a, a sign that you're probably going in the right direction when the bigger portion of society nods their head in disapproval. Because I don't think they get it. I think I nod my head in disapproval at the majority of people that think that it's all about money, it's all about climbing ladders and rolling dice. I mean, maybe they don't roll dice enough. And with children, it's not even about rolling dice, you know? It's about climbing trees, not ladders. It's about tossing stones, not rolling dice. It's not about gambling, and it's not about climbing a ladder to certain success, but it's about doing what you feel that you want to do at the time, you know? And this isn't to say I support hedonism to a full extent and believe that everybody should just follow their impulse and just, you know, gratify their senses within the moment and do whatever they please and just have fun, you know? We always got to strike a balance. And that's why I think, I think as we grow older, we have to rise, we have to develop to meet the requirements of adulthood, so to speak, or, you know, of, of all of the uh, imposed obligations legally upon us once we reach the government's idea and the society's idea of adult. You know, once we become an adult, we have to enter this game, whether we want to or not, and we have to play to survive. We have to, you know, study and work and all of this, and it's fair enough. So we should rise up, we should meet the requirements, of everything that we need to do and at the same token we shouldn't forget that we are still just children essentially getting by and loving life and enjoying life and having fun and playing we should always keep that in mind but not too much we shouldn't think too hard about it we should just not remove ourselves and disconnect from that internal place within us where the child does thrive we shouldn't let go of that and become too fixated on things which were taught to us because it's the adult that teaches the child what an adult is. And it's like the chicken or the egg, what came first? I can tell you the answer to that. The child did. Something happened along the way, some kind of mutation. And uh, yeah, now there's just this series of ill teachings being passed down generation after gene ration after generation. And we have a whole lot of children thinking that there's something else totally lost with closed ears and closed eyes 
no longer inquiring, no longer truly listening to the music of life, and just going through the motions of necessity and monotony. It's not really fun at all.